Well, I'm like you. I, I don't know how anything could be overhyped. I, if if we spoke in flames and our words were cast on stones and people screamed at 100 decibels, I don't think it could be uh, overhyped. I mean, a circumstance is beyond perplexing. We're in a situation now, and I think we ought to call it what it is. It's piracy. I mean, piracy is when people unlawfully use their ability to force their way um, to take possession of things that are not theirs. The Ambassador Bridge is not theirs. Um, these guys don't represent truckers. They don't represent any constituency. They don't have any consistency. I mean, all week long, Evan, you've been doing clips out speaking to these protesters. There's no coherence to anything they say. It's just, it's, it's literally a bag of nonsense and grievances. And they want to unseat the government. Now they want to disrupt trade. I'm, I'm old enough to remember two weeks ago when I was told that this was all about supply chains. So, you know, it's it's beyond belief. I recognize the problems in trying to bring this to a halt. But, you know, whether it's tow, stow or go, it's time to put an end to this. But how? I mean, this, this is this, this is exposed. And I'm speaking to Scott Reed. Um, I, I don't think the challenge is overhyped. Um, I think the failure of uh, the government, to which some have suggested, I think is is overhyped. And I'm not trying to be partisan. I think I've been critical of the prime minister for not being more present uh, at, at the outset and throughout. Uh, so I buy that. But I don't think his presence ought to come with uh, offers of mediation or any 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 recognition of this group as though someone that you ought to sit across the table from. I'm sorry, this is why I call it piracy. You put your finger on something really important. The trucks matter, right? The physicality of them, the imposing nature of them, the difficulty, almost impossibility of physically removing them. You know, tow truck drivers get intimidated. They don't want to move them. They're very large. How do you get rid of them? They create a physical barrier as well as a psychological and frankly, a cultural one. And so, you know, we end up in a situation where it's impossible to, to dislodge. So I'll tell you what, you, you start with what you don't do. What you don't do is treat pirates as though they are um, some uh, sovereign entity that deserves to be um, negotiated with. We don't negotiate with people that take things by force. They're taking a bridge by force. They're taking a city by force. You don't negotiate with them. So you say, sorry, no. The conservatives can say that they want to talk to them all day long. They can say they want a recognition. That's fine. They want to let that dog loose in their yard. They're going to get bit. The government should never, ever deem the people that assert themselves through lawlessness and force ought to be negotiated with. And I think we just we python them. We take away their fuel. We take away the means to live. We put handcuffs on them when we can. If they step out of their rigs and onto the road, well then, you know what? You put handcuffs on them. And in terms of the spreading across the country, we know what the lesson is. We saw it in Toronto. You want it to stop, you don't let it start. You don't get in the downtown core. You don't get to a position. Yeah, but you say that, but I just spoke to a senior RCMP officer and he said, yeah, everyone says that. But the truckers were pretty small time in, in Toronto compared Look, they knew they were coming for the Ambassador Bridge. They'd seen the movie. It still happened. Yeah. Stop them. Set up roadblocks. What are they? Are they going to smash through the roadblocks? Are they going to drive over police cars? I mean, I, like, I, I'm not calling for, you know, armed and direct physical conflict, but you have to keep them out of places, particularly urban centers, critical infrastructure, where they can repeat the success, and we may as well call it a success, the success they've had in the city of Ottawa. You can't permit that. Did to be Justin repeated. Trudeau make him a mis- like, I, again, I'm, I'm speaking to sources. They said, you know, part of this is he he clamped down too hard, going after the last 10 percent of truckers who were never going to get vaccinated anyway. One of them said to me, look, what did he expect to happen? These folks have no they won't work now. They've they've become weaponized. He didn't need to do it. He was already winning. He tried to, you know, he didn't leave any crumbs on the table. He tried to go after every single person. He didn't need to. There's 10% of the people that never wanted vaccinated. He should have just stopped it and eased it up, but he's lost control of the situation now. I guess I'm a hard ass. My attitude on this is absolute inflexibility. You do not permit a tiny, loud, uh, unruly group to dictate rules across the board. I'm sorry. We know what the health imperative is. It is to get vaccinated. We know that one of the ways in which to ensure that is to create mandates. And I'm sorry, I got no time for saying, oh, you know what? The fault of uh, the fault of disorder, the fault of those who are choosing to be lawless lies with those 
that democratically and through the rule of law imposed rules, imposed laws? No. Sorry. What about, if you're breaking now, the law, you're accountable for it, not what those about, that created the laws. What do you make, Scott Reid, of Candace Bergen this morning, interim conservative leader, calling for an end to the protests, the very protest she has multiple pictures supporting? What about the conservative position on this? Absolute incoherence and irresponsibility. They want to embrace this movement. They want to channel this anger. They want to be the political beneficiaries of it. They're being exploitative of this, but they are now seeing the limits of that. They now know, you know, again, two weeks ago, conservatives were saying, oh, it's not even about mandates. It's about supply chains and the failure of this government. Well, now the ambassador bridge is blocked. And, you know, now they can only grudgingly say, well, we think it's time for, you know, this to end. But they still think that we ought to kowtow to those. If the shoe was reversed and conservatives were in government, I'm telling you right now, just as we've seen Jason Kenney struggle with this, there are obligations that come with the responsibility of government. They themselves would also have to enforce these rules. They themselves would refuse to sit across the table and negotiate with people who are trying to hold a nation hostage. No, no good. All right, I got one minute. Um, Where is this heading, Scott? What are you looking for next? It's heading for an escalation. It's it's heading. It, I mean, I think people's patience is wearing thin. I think the demand uh, for um, imposition of law and order is growing. I hope that that can be conducted without um, having any kind of uh, violence or conflict. But I think at the end of the day, so I call it pipe thinning. They've got to start to choke them off. Their access to resources, their access to fuel. Once you do that, it will winnow down to a smaller group. Yes, they'll be obstinate, and then you move in with a higher number of people and with handcuffs. Scott Reed, uh, there's a dark time here, folks, and there are more protests coming. And where does this end? Scott Reed, CTV News political commentator, overhyped and underplayed. No way to underplay any of this. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, buddy.